Go ahead, Patrick. Tell us about okay. What's in the Sky. Okay, so um, we'll start with this uh, picture, which I took uh, last month. And uh, one of the prominent uh, planets uh, still visible right after sunset is Venus. And we can go to the next slide and we can identify all the objects in this picture. So there's Venus and uh, Venus is still with us, uh, but not for long because it's uh, at the beginning of this month, it'll be setting one and a half hours after sunset. And then by next week, it will only be uh, uh, one hour. This is a picture that Tony took uh, showing Venus's uh, phase uh, through a telescope. And it's a, a little uh, waning uh, crescent phase now. Uh, we can go to the next slide because uh, something's going to be happening with Venus in the evening sky. On the 21st, uh, look to the uh, uh, west and uh, southwest, look for Venus. And right next to it, next slide, is the planet Mercury, and its only uh, separation between the two are just about one degree apart. Uh, you probably need a pair of binoculars to see a Mercury, which is substantially fainter than uh, Venus. And uh, this view is just about one hour before Venus and Mercury sets uh, below the horizon. Okay, well, let's go to the next slide here. In the evening sky, um, we're going to just do a quick uh, review of the stars that you can see in the spring sky. Look to the south uh, at any night, around about nine, and uh, you'll see uh, a, a two bright stars. One of them is Arcturus, which is known as the bear guardian, guardian of the, of the Big Dipper or the Great Bear. And the other is uh, Procyon. Between the two stars, uh, there are, uh, there's a constellation called Leo the Lion, which you've all heard of. You can go to the next slide. And it's bright star Regulus. You can see the shape there. There's a backwards question mark for the head and mane of the line. And uh, the hindquarters is just made of a triangle. Just a little bit lower uh, of, um, is Virgo and its bright star um, Spiker. Uh, Virgo, it looks like a y sh letter Y shaped letter in the sky. And uh, if for a little bit more of a challenge, if you're learning constellations for the first time, uh, look a little bit lower below Virgo and you'll see the constellation Corvus, which is made out of four stars. It looks like a trapezoid. All right, we'll turn to the morning sky. Oh, oh of course, if you have active imaginations, you can see these, uh, these constellations. <laughs> so uh, we'll turn to the morning sky. And uh, last month, uh, we saw a spectacular arrangement of uh, three bright planets that you can see early morning. And this picture I took uh, showing the moon uh, below Mars, Saturn, and Jupiter. You can see this again um, in, uh, it, we'll take a look in the next slide here, starting May 11, where the uh, the, the moon is uh, to the right of Jupiter and Saturn and Mars. But if you get up uh, every morning around about 4.30, you can see the moon move uh, below, uh, next slide, on the uh, below Jupiter on the 12th. And we can continue, and you can see the sequence of events between Mars and uh, Saturn, and the moon slowly moves and becomes more crescent-shaped as it passes Mars in the, in the morning sky. Um, okay, and now for that uh, surprise, uh, well, next slide, and this is a beautiful comet, uh, Comet Swan, uh, which was uh, became visible right after uh, uh, Atlas broke up, and uh, it, you need a telescope to see this, but there was an opportunity to see it, a very, very limited opportunity. And we're gonna play you a little animation here and show you that if you were to get up in the early morning of, uh, of May, starting on the 14th, you can see that the comet will be visible in the north uh, northeast, but for a very limited time. The comet uh, will be maximum, It's I think it's gonna be about third magnitude. So you do need to see uh, use a pair of binoculars to see it. And you might only see the tail because it's just high enough. You might not be able to see the head or the nucleus of the comet. So uh, that's a limited opportunity, but you need a very clear view of the horizon and a very and it has to be kind of clear uh, of haze. If I can add, Patrick, right now it's only visible from the southern hemisphere. But okay. It's late this month that it moves to the northern hemisphere, but unfortunately that's it and then it disappears for several weeks until it reappears much, much fainter in June. So uh, so that's it, but it's better than Atlas will probably be in terms of brightness. Right. 
Okay, and lastly, what are our moon phases next month? We're gonna go with the uh, with the state flower of California, which is the uh, golden poppy here. And um, full moon's on the seventh, uh, last quarter is on the fifteenth. And if we don't like a sky with no moon, that's gonna be the twenty-first. And uh, first quarter is the twenty-ninth. If you want to see the moon right after sunset, and that's it for the sky report.